the principle of the internal fixator using the locking compression plate or LCP. The objective of this presentation is to understand the principle of the internal fixator. Demonstrated are the internal fixator protecting an independent lag screw, the internal fixator bridging a complex fracture, the internal fixator as a buttress plate, and the advantages of angular stability in osteoporotic bone. The plate used will be the 4.5, 5.0 LCP. The unique combination holes allow this plate to be used with standard 4.5 millimeter cortex screws or 5 millimeter locking head screws. The standard 4.5 millimeter cortex screws are placed in the unthreaded portions of the combination hole, in other words, the dynamic compression unit. Wide angulation of the screws is possible. Cortex screws can be used to fix the plate onto the bone in the conventional way or to achieve dynamic compression of the fracture when inserted eccentrically and tightened. Axial preload and friction between plate and bone provide stability. The threadless part of the combination hole always faces towards the end of the plate, the space between the two inner combination holes whose thread portions face each other, represents the center or middle of the plate. Based on this symmetry, dynamic compression can be brought to bear from both ends of the plate. The 5 mm locking head screws are only used in combination with plates. The locking head screw is inserted in the threaded part of the combination hole. The head itself will lock firmly in the plate when driven home, thus providing angular as well as axial stability. The plate is not pressed onto the bone surface to achieve fracture fixation. A locking head screw is characterized by its threaded head, its larger core diameter of 4.3 millimeters, and a shallow thread. The green self-tapping screw has cutting flutes as well as a rounded tip. This is the screw used for the exercises. The blue self-drilling self-tapping screws have a drill bit tip as well as cutting flutes. The self-drilling version should only be used in the diaphysis and is a monocortical screw. If used in a bicortical fashion, the long and sharp drill tip could damage any structures outside the bone. Both screws can be used only in combination with an LCP. Needed to insert the locking head screw are two LCP drill sleeves, the 4.3 millimeter drill bit which corresponds to the diameter of the core of the screw, the depth gauge, the 4 newton meter torque limiter, the handle and the screwdriver shaft. The large torque indicating screwdriver can also be used. The internal fixator bridging a complex fracture. This exercise will demonstrate the use of the LCP system in combination with the MEPO technique or minimally invasive plate osteosynthesis. The second layer of black foam on the bone simulates the soft tissue envelope. First, the anatomical reduction, that is the length, axis, and rotation of the two main fragments, must be restored. This reduction may be achieved by indirect reduction techniques, such as manual traction, or the use of a distractor, a temporary external fixator, or a traction table. In clinical practice, the objective is to minimize the additional trauma to the fracture zone by using no direct manipulation of the fragments. The 12-hole LCP will be used to bridge the fracture. The plate is held against the bone with the LCP drill sleeve. The required position is adjusted using the image intensifier. At one end, a small incision is made down to the periosteum. The plate is gently introduced and slid under the soft tissue cover in the epiperiosteal layer. During insertion, the position of the plate should be monitored with the image intensifier. Here, the advancement of the plate can be checked visually. After palpation of the plate, a second short incision is made to allow the second drill sleeve to be firmly screwed into the end hole of the plate.
The reduction of the fracture, as well as the position of the plate, should be checked once more. The plate is now fixed to the bone at one end by a locking head screw inserted bicortically. Drilling is done with the 4.3 millimeter drill bit. The drill sleeve is removed and the depth is measured. A green self-tapping locking head screw is inserted with the power drill. Although the last few turns must be done by hand with the torque limiting screwdriver in order to prevent over tightening. At this stage, the reduction is again checked. Length, alignment and rotation of the bone must be correct. Minor reduction adjustments can be performed indirectly using the drill sleeve. Once correct reduction has been achieved, the 4.3 millimeter hole for the locking screw is drilled. The drill bit has to be left in place. It's important to realize that with one fixation device per main fragment, any correction of length or rotation is no longer possible. However, adjustment of the axial alignment in one plane can still be carried out. Another plate hole is found by palpating the plate surface. If necessary, the image intensifier can be used to locate the holes. After incising the skin, the second drill sleeve is carefully inserted and the second 4.3 millimeter drill bit is used. The corresponding self-tapping locking head screw is inserted. Only now are the drill bit and drill sleeve removed from the end hole and another locking head screw inserted. Additional locking head screws must be inserted, avoiding the comminuted fracture zone. At least two screws per main fragment are required. As bridge plating with an LCP provides relative stability only and protects the bone vascularity for its entire length, bone healing by callus formation will be enhanced. Removing the outer foam layer shows that relative stability is achieved with no compression of the plate on the bone and no interfragmentary fracture compression. The fracture area has been bridged by the plate. First, the internal fixator, protecting an independent lag screw which provides absolute stability. The short oblique distal tibia fracture is anatomically reduced and held with the pointed reduction forceps. As the first step, a 4.5 millimeter lag screw is inserted in the AP direction. The glide hole is drilled with the 4.5 millimeter drill bit and protection sleeve. The 3.2 sleeve is inserted into the glide hole and the thread hole in the far cortex is drilled with the 3.2 millimeter drill bit. On the tibial crest, countersinking is necessary, otherwise the screw head is too prominent. The screw length is measured with the depth gauge. And the far cortex is tapped. A 4.5 millimeter cortex screw is inserted to provide interfragmentary compression.
the reduction forceps is removed. Here an inadequately contoured LCP fixed in a conventional way is shown. When the last screws are tightened into the poorly contoured plate, the fracture dislocates. This disadvantage does not arise if an LCP with locking head screws is used. Therefore, this plate does not have to be pre-shaped absolutely anatomically. The LCP has been slightly bent at the distal end. The plate with the LCP drill sleeve screwed into the most distal hole as a handle is gently inserted and slid along the medial aspect of the tibia. As the locking head screws cannot be angled, care must be taken when positioning the plate to prevent screw penetration of the joint. Moving proximally, the plate does not touch the bone, nor will it need any additional contouring or torque. The most distal hole is drilled with the 4.3 mm drill bit through the drill sleeve that has served as an insertion handle. The drill sleeve is removed, and the length is measured with the depth gauge. The green self-tapping locking head screw is inserted with the torque limiting screwdriver attached to the power drive. The last turns have to be done by hand to prevent the thread from jamming, so the power drill is exchanged for the handle of the screwdriver. At this point, if the other end of the plate is not well secured, the helicopter effect will be created. Therefore, before completely tightening the first screw, the plate is fixed to the bone using the most proximal screw hole. The LCP drill sleeve is gently screwed into the threaded part of the combination hole. To make sure that the sleeve has been placed correctly, its purchase in the screw hole has to be checked. Here it is moved sideways, which means that it has to be reinserted. Once the thread has found a firm hold in the plate, the sleeve will not move. The second sleeve is fixed into the fourth hole from the top. Holding the plate firmly with the sleeve, a 4.3 mm hole is drilled bicortically through the most proximal plate hole. The drill sleeve is removed, and the screw length is measured with the depth gauge. A self-tapping locking head screw is inserted. The screw head is locked in the plate by hand with the torque limiting screwdriver. When the maximum of four Newton meters is reached, a click <coughs> is heard and felt. The screw in the most distal hole is now tightened. The hole for the second bicortical screw in the proximal fragment is prepared. The screw length is measured. The appropriate screw is inserted. It's clear that the plate is not pressed against the bone, leaving a gap for the periosteum and healthy tissue ingrowth. To finish the fixation, one more locking head screw is introduced in the distal main fragment. <laughs>